Hello and good morning friends, welcome to the Edusit lecture. Through this live lectures of R, we try to bring out for you different topics and to give you a wide perspective on these topics, we try to bring to our studios or welcome to our studios the eminent scholars and the renowned ac academicians who have a deep insight into it. And today, uh, as far as this lecture is concerned, we are going to talk about the service marketing. And we can say it is the important element which is prevailing in our society, in our community, in our country. It, uh, it, is, it is running very fastly and to know it, to have a greater insight of it. Uh, we have with us uh, Dr. Ravi Shankar. He is associated with the IIFT. He is a renowned academician. And apart from this, I would like to tell you that he is the author of Service Marketing. Services Marketing, The Indian Perspective and I would also like to tell you that it is the first Indian book on this topic that is this very topic, Services Marketing and since last two decades this is one of the most popular book in this particular area. First of all, I would like to welcome our guest Dr. Ravi Shankar. Uh, Dr. Shankar, you are welcomed in this edusic lecture of ours. Uh, I would like you to uh, to explain to our students, our viewers, uh, what this service industry is, uh, what is this uh, services marketing is. Okay, thank you. Uh, friends, uh, as you know that for the last uh, three, four lectures, we are talking about services marketing and every time when we interact, we pick up one issue and uh, discuss at length uh, that particular issue over uh, the, the one hour session. So today, uh, in the area of services marketing, we will pick up the distribution. If you recall, uh, last week uh, or last month, we were talking about issues like uh, service product, service positioning, and uh, also we introduced the, the whole concept of services. And today we will uh, discuss at length uh, the distribution issues in the services sector. What we will do that uh, we shall start with the basic fundamentals of distribution and then apply to the services sector. Otherwise, the entire debate may remain uh, unconclusive or it may uh, remain, uh, you know, uh, conceptually uh, not very clear. So today we will discuss some of the basic fundamentals of uh, distribution. And maybe um, uh, in the subsequent lecture, we will talk about the detailed discussions in the, we'll talk about the, the services distribution. Uh, historically, if we will now look at the, uh, the screens, uh, we may say that distribution has always added value to the, to the, to the marketing uh, uh, system or the marketing efforts of a company. I mean, historically, we know that a particular farmer who grows uh, the agriculture uh, uh, crop or uh, agriculture produce, uh, the farmer cannot take uh, the wheat he grows or the rice he grows or the onions or potatoes he grows uh, to the uh, customers, people like you and me. They have to pass through the, the, the distributing agencies. Uh, we have seen uh, on the roads of our own city uh, many a times, you know, truckloads of potatoes or a tractor trolley load of uh, cauliflowers or any such item uh, which is going from one part to the other part. And we keep wondering that where it is going. Uh, the fact is that the farmer is uh, taking the agriculture produce to the so-called uh, mandi. And from their mandi, the, 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 uh, the, the, the brokers, the, the merchant, the jinko, the ones who are called arti. So they are the ones who buy the product from that farmer. And next day in the morning, the, at 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, the, the, the vegetable vendors, they go to the mandi, they pick up their supplies and then they bring it to their uh, shop from where it is uh, people like you and me, we go and buy. And the, the, the fruits and vegetables. So historically speaking, in the conventional marketing system, whether we talk of agriculture produce or we talk of agriculture or the other raw materials, any of those items, the marketing intermediaries like retailers, agents, brokers, wholesalers, distributors, they are the ones who take the product to the end user and for the con or for to the consumer or to the in industrial buyer or say an institution 
and they also provide these manufacturer or producers they also provide the, the, the these uh, intermediaries they provide various kinds of services and there could be some other facilitating agencies which also come in for example there could be a transportation company which does the this whole whole job of taking raw materials to the uh, market it could be the financing agency which does that role or it could be advertising or communication agencies uh, we know that uh, uh, retailing has undergone major change over the last so many years but today even the conventional retailing we see the the conventional uh, the, the glimpses of conventional retailing we also see in the cities uh, for example the area where i stay there is a monday market the monday market is where people come with whole lot of things and uh, they on the footpath they 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 establish their temporary shops and people know that in here, this particular area this particular road on monday there will be a monday bazaar people go there and buy it from there and even in in the rural areas there were uh, you know monday markets or wednesday markets so people from nearby villages were coming uh, to buy things from that area so uh, this this is uh, a, a conventional historical uh, you know phenomenon which is still continuing it's very interesting to see that it's still continuing and the second thing which i would like to say that uh, we were talking about melas earlier that there is a something called nochandi ka mela so if, uh, people it's a it's a it's a annual or festival uh, where people come to buy things uh, you know that uh, if, even uh, for ca cattle even for animals you have to if you want to buy a camel maybe it's a pushkar mela where one can go and pick up the best camel best breed of camels and uh, we know that in 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 your own state there might be uh, mandis for buffaloes for cows for cattle uh, why this uh, obviously we are sellers and buyers they come together and we now see a very beautiful extension of it in terms of in the city of delhi we have pragati maidan where they also do about 30 to 40 fairs every year engineering fair leather good fair uh, food uh, textile so many uh, actually and uh, automobiles and it is in uh, book fair for that matter and i i personally feel that uh, the the systems which we had they still continue their form may have changed if there were melas earlier even today there are melas in the mela earlier it was called nochandi ka mela maybe it is still there but in the city of delhi the auto expo is still uh, you know a, a, a improved version of the same thing so those phenomenons which phenomenon which started i think they have been improvised and become became more uh, uh, you know organized uh there's only change but the fact still remains majority of the con manufacturers they find it difficult to take their goods to the ultimate consumers they have to pass through it in intermediaries and it is in that context distribution plays an important important role in the economy there there are three major issues in in distribution one is physical distribution how physically the goods will move if the goods move through aircraft the cost is high if the goods move through road it takes time and that is where the railway corridor which is coming up it is likely that once the railway corridor is there good from tamil nadu may reach delhi maybe in in 48 hours currently a lorry takes about a week 6 days to 7 days to come from tamil nadu to to delhi so the physical distribution relates to the issues concerning how physically the goods will move in terms of transportation in terms of inventory in terms of lot quantity in terms of uh, uh, you know uh, um, inventory carrying cost and many other issues the second is channel management what type of distribution channels you use the type of partners which you have 
for example, there are some wrist watches like H when it was HMT and HMT wrist watches were available through canteen stores department also. Now that was one channel through which the, the watches were sold. The other was cooperatives that you go to Kendriya Bandar and you can buy the wrist watch, HMT. So that is the second channel. Third is the retail channel that you go to um, Connaught Place, go to Surendra Watch and Company and you can pick up from that particular shop the wrist watches. So that is the channel part of it, the type of partners you have and the number of people who are there. And finally, customer service. I think the end result of marketing is customer satisfaction and also to look after the customer. Where the customer service is given, the customer service is given at the retail level. If I have, a, I have purchased a particular brand of say air conditioner or a refrigerator or a washing machine or a steam iron from a particular shop and it, if it stops working during the guarantee period, I will go to the same shop or ring up that shopkeeper and tell him that, oh, I bought it three months ago and the guarantee is for six months and in the guarantee period it has gone out of order. Tell me what do I do? So it is that retail level which provides me the customer service. And many a time the goods flow backwards, which means I, my steam iron has gone out of order. I give it to that shop. From that shop, it might go to the factory or after sale service outlet and then it is redistributed. And there also it has to be the same steam iron has to be given to me and not an old model of somebody else. So they, they, these are various elements of customer service which hold true both in the manufacturing as well as in the services sector. So friends, what we are discussing, we are discussing in terms of distribution these three major issues physical distribution, channel management, and customer service. If you look at the slide uh, on the screen, we may find that on the one side of the river, you may have the producer. And on the uh, other side of the river, you have the consumers. It is impossible to take your goods to the customers. You need to have a bridge, and the bridge is actually on the pillars of your dealers and the distributors. It is dealers and distributors who take your goods from, from, from producer to the customer. It, so remember this particular uh, you know, graphics, which clearly indicates the importance of, of dealers and distributors who can take your goods to the ultimate customer. And therefore, in distribution, these three issues are extremely important. If you pick up a book written by, on distribution two decades ago, it, the book may talk about in distribution, there are three issues, location, location, and again, location. So the location was given the utmost importance in the earlier time, where your outlets are. The second part, today, today everyone is talking about alongside location, delivery and market coverage. There's a very interesting story which uh, has come up in the newspapers about two or three days ago about Suzuki Motors, Maruti Suzuki. And uh, it talks about that uh, they want to set up their, their showrooms in upmarket areas. For example, there is a corporate office in, uh, and the story gives the example of uh, the upmarket area of Delhi called Vasant Kunj. And in Vasant Kunj, they have their corporate office where the Suzuki Motors have put up a huge big display and also the, 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 uh, the, the cars are uh, being, being displayed there. And uh, the story says that Suzuki, uh, Maruti Suzuki is, is buying prime land areas in uh, different cities so that it gives the feeling of the so-called the upmarket vehicle. Today, Suzuki vehicles are not seen as upmarket vehicles. They are seen as, you know, middle uh, income or economy kind of vehicles. The fact is Suzuki Motors 
uh, any car which they introduced in the higher price area, uh, it didn't succeed in the Indian market, whether it was Grand Vitara or Vitara, it didn't succeed, so was Kazashi, which was not successful in the Indian market. So if it is a luxury, luxury, Suzuki is not seen as luxury brand. Uh, Suzuki is keen, seen as uh, an economy brand. So if you want to buy a vehicle, say between 5 to 10 lakhs, uh, or, so that is where people are buying Suzuki uh, or Maruti Suzuki vehicles. And uh, the story talks about the, the Indian subsidiary of Suzuki Motors, which is Maruti Suzuki is planning to invest in buying prime uh, space uh, in, in different parts of the country where they will not aim at selling vehicles but just to display the vehicles and that is where just to position the product appropriately in the marketplace. So the location has that kind of an importance. Uh, uh, the second part which I have said delivery and market coverage. There may be a market potential, but since you are not present in that market, your physical presence in that market, because you are, you are not physically there, that is why you are unable to harness the market potential. Look at Haldiram. Any new mall which is coming up, they open up their uh, you know, uh, outlet there. Why? To cover the market. People go to that particular mall, they will obviously eat something and they might, if there is an outlet uh, of their company, uh, they will go and eat at that place. So location, delivery and market coverage are three very, very important elements in distribution. If you look at even uh, from the services sector, uh, I gave this example earlier also that ATMs. ATMs, why ATMs and the network of ATMs, it's basically to cover the market. Dr. C. Lal, to, there was a time three decades ago, and in my earlier lecture also I gave this example. Three decades ago in the city of Delhi, you had to be at the Hanuman Road to get some pathological test done. Today, they are just a phone call away. You make a phone call, somebody from the nearby um, uh, you know, uh, uh, practicing a clinic, uh, um, uh, from a clinic, uh, somebody will come to collect the sample and they keep it in a, uh, you know, a cold box uh, from where it is uh, delivered to the, uh, the, their collection center and then, then, and then the reports are generated after the analysis and so on. So there are, these are the three major issues in distribution location, delivery and market coverage. Always remember that if you are not doing well, are you present in that market? If you are not, then how can you have uh, higher volumes? The company called Fiat Motors, Fiat is doing very well in Europe. Fiat is in Italy, it's an Italian brand which does extremely well in different parts of Europe, but in India they didn't. They tried through Siana, Palio, Uno, uh, now Linea. Uh, it's only Linea when they introduce with distribution support from Tata, they could do it uh, reasonably well. But after they have separated once again from Tata's, uh, they have this big challenge to set up a distribution network uh, uh, in, in India to compete in the Indian market. So distribution is important and it is in that context, location, delivery and market coverage remains the three most critical issues in distribution. It's being said that the major purpose of marketing is to, to, to deliver, uh, to satisfy human need and deliver products uh, of various types to buyers when and where they want to buy. And I just give you an example, where you want the newspaper and when you want the newspaper. You want the newspaper at 6 o'clock, where you want the newspaper, in your balcony or in your veranda or in your terrace. So when and where aspect is taken care by distribution. 
we know in the newspaper industry, <coughs> the, uh, the the newspapers might be published by mid uh, mid uh, by midnight. In fact, uh, for 200, 300 kilometer area, the lorries leave around you know midnight. Uh, from Delhi, I know the lorries for Bareilly leave around 12 o'clock or uh, or so, so that in the next six hours, the the lorries reach Bareilly, which means the the lorries must reach, or the vans must reach Bareilly by by five o'clock or six o'clock, so that they immediately they are then given to the vendors and the vendors then they distribute. So when and where aspect is very important. If they want and, uh, the citizens of Bareilly, they want to read Times of India, it is Times of India which has to ensure that it reaches. Uh, it could be that the Times of India has to reach either from Lucknow to Bareilly or from Delhi to Bareilly. Uh, they may not have a Bareilly edition, Times of India may have a Lucknow edition. So uh, this when and where aspect is very, very critical in, in, in distribution. When you want, where you want. And then when and where aspect of marketing is taken care by the distribution. And it is in that context distribution holds a great significance in the market. The other aspect of uh, distribution is that distribution resolves two major discrepancies, volume discrepancy and the variety discrepancy. Let me explain this one by one. The meaning of volume discrepancy is that at the unit level, what is the production and the discrepancy between the production and consumption at the unit level. Think of a factory making edible salt. They may be making tons of salt every day. And what is the consumption at the unit level? In my household, we consume only maximum 2 kgs of salt per, per month. And at the factory, they are producing salt at such a huge quantity in, in, in a month. So this is a discrepancy of, of at the unit level at the production and the consumption. Now this discrepancy of volume the volumes in which you produce and the volumes in which it is consumed is re resolved by distribution, by accumulation and allocation. So they allocate stocks to territories. So a lorry load may come to the north India. From Delhi, uh, uh, the, from uh, the lorry it may go to, or the wagon load may come to north India. From the wagon it goes into lorries to different states and from there it may go to um, in gattu trucks or small trucks to different districts and then from there uh, we have seen that a particular shopkeeper of a village he may be carrying 5 kgs of namak in a jola on his bicycle along with other things the two jolas on the handle and two jolas at the back and one big jola at, at the carrier the five jolas he goes from the city to, to back to the village where he has a small shop. So this is where the volume discrepancy is resolved by distribution. And the second is variety discrepancy. People don't want everything from the same company. You want variety of brands. Look at your own toilet kit. The moment you get up and by the time you leave for your work, you might use half a dozen of different brands. You do not you get up, you go to the bathroom, you use toothbrush, toothpaste. So you may use one brand of toothbrush, second brand of toothpaste. You may take bath with one brand of uh, toilet soap, another brand of shampoo. You may use, um, the men may use a, a brand of shaving cream and another brand of razor blade. Third brand of aftershave. Once you finish your bath, you may use a, another one more brand, another brand of talcum powder or uh, you know, uh, cologne or uh, Dio. So uh, see your own toilet kit and see the brands. That is the called variety discrepancy. And this variety discrepancy is resolved by distribution, by sorting and assorting. When you go to a shop, when you go to an, any mall, when you go to a shop like Big Bazaar or Spencer's or any other, what you get? You get 
they, they collect and they give you, they sort it out and they give you an assortment. For example, the first shelf will give you an assortment of all brands of toothpaste. So you decide which one you want to buy. You move next shelf to the next shelf, it gives you a whole lot of brands of toilet soaps. So you pick up which one you want. You move to the third shelf, it gives you a whole assortment of shampoos. So you decide which one you want to buy. The fourth shelf, telcom powder and so on. So these discrepancies, the volume and variety discrepancies are resolved by distribution. And it is in that context, distribution holds tremendous, tremendous significance. A company cannot take the entire, cannot meet the requirements of the customer to that extent. Look at a pharmacy, medical shop. The kind of medicines they have, I can easily say that a, a big, good pharmacy may have medicines of more than 100 manufacturers. If imagine that you have to pick up the medicines, if you are sick, you have to go to 10 different manufacturers to get the medicines which the doctor has prescribed. I mean, it will take you three days to get that medicine, those medicines. What you do, you ring up a pharmacy and the pharmacy people, they deliver it at your home in the next one hour. So distribution has that phenomenal advantage in terms of variety and volume discrepancy. People are talking that now uh, digital marketing online, these portals, Flipkart and all that stuff has come up. Yes, they are there. They, they have their own share. But in certain sectors, the relevance of distribution perhaps cannot be uh, undermined. It is in that backdrop I say this distribution resolves two major discrepancies, variety discrepancy and volume discrepancy. And uh, therefore, the distribution plays and will continue to play a major role in the market. Now the argument is, the moment you have distributors, your transportation cost goes up. The argument is wrong. The moment you have a distributor, your, your transportation cost may come down. Look at these two diagrams, one which I am currently showing and another I will show after a minute. Think of four manufacturers. Say one is manufacturing washing machines, say uh, IFB. The second is making mobile phones, Nokia. The third is making uh, air conditioners like um, uh, you know, LG, Samsung or any of those. And the fourth one is making uh, water purifiers or something like that, which is... Uh, now, there could be uh, retailers. I am familiar with um, uh, one retailer in south of Delhi called Pankaj Electronics in Green Park area and I go to Pankaj Electronics and I get, if I want to buy a washing machine, I can pick up from Pankaj Electronics. I want a mobile phone, I can get from Pankaj Electronics. I want a refrigerator, I can get, or a microwave, so I can get from Pankaj Electronics. So if there are four manufacturers and they are want to go to reach out to the 10 dealers, 10 retailers or dealers, these 40 transactions will take place. But the moment you put a wholesaler, the total number of transactions are reduced from 40 to 14 and your transportation cost will come down. And that is where I say that many a times this whole argument that more distributors may cause, cause your cost may go up, it could be if you plan it well, your cost may come down. That is why in the pharma, pharma sector, they are distributors. The local pharmacy fellow in my colony will go to a distributor of medicine and buy the medicine from the distributor and not from the manufacturer. So that's a myth again that if you have a very long distribution channel, it could be that your cost may go up. The fact is that if you have a good distribution system, your cost may come down. 
And therefore, friends, uh, I once again say, I further justify the role of distribution in, in, in marketing. We move further and now we look at exclusive or selective distribution, intensity of distribution. It's actually the nature of the product. Uh, for example, uh, there are products which have pull in the market. For example, a brand, brand of cosmetics, Shanazos and Cosmetics. Now, everyone knows these cosmetics are very good. They, they are uncomparable. They are the best. And Shanazos and Cosmetics are not available where Ponds, Nivea, Imami are available. Why? Because Shanazos and Cosmetics ha ha have created a pull for the brand. It didn't happen overnight. It's an excellent, excellent uh, case study to, to think, read and introspect. This lady created a history uh, in, the, in the marketing. And uh, in fact, uh, what she did, she created a pull for the brand. She started writing columns in the women magazines rather than advertising and gave, uh, started suggesting home remedies uh, to the young girls and to women, young women. Uh, somebody said that, look, I got dark circles around my eyes, what do I do? Or uh, I got, um, you know, my hair are very dry. And she gave very, very simple um, uh, uh, home remedies like use honey, use, um, you know, egg, for hair or, you know, cucumber uh, or uh, lemon or uh, uh, pili mitti or one of some of those things. But she had a logic for each of those and she built it and created phenomenal awareness for that brand called Shainaz. And today, somebody who wants to buy, they know where to go and buy. So there is no need to have very desperate kind of a distribution, which is extensive distribution. But the, on the other hand, there are products which, is, which are doing very well in the market only because they have wonderful distribution. Nirma is a wonderful, uh, you know, it's doing well in the market. Why? Because every shop which is selling detergent is selling Nirma detergent. So it's a, it has 100% retail penetration. So friends, there are three aspects of distribution in terms of exclusive distribution, selective distribution, and intensity distribution. It is you who has to think in terms of what kind of marketing strategy I can have for my brand, and accordingly ensure how do I compete with my competitors. The simple reason why LG became so successful in the Indian market the fact was when LG came in the Indian market as a lucky gold star, it failed. They reworked their marketing program, came out with a wonderful logo, and uh, they, their lucky gold star was changed to LG. And uh, they reworked out their marketing program, went uh, for an extensive distribution, and obviously relatively low prices and they became uh, instant success in the Indian market. So uh, it is you who has to decide in terms of exclusive, selective, or in, uh, distribution. So friends, we move for further and we look at some of the factors which determine the marketing channels. The first is uh, the distribution intensity, which I have already explained. The second is consumer characteristics, consumer profile, consumer buying cycle. Uh, there are smokers who buy cigarettes in, in, and they buy loose cigarettes. They can, uh, they buy two or three. They always buy loose cigarettes. The youngsters, the college going boys and girls, they buy cigarettes loose. So their buying cycle is as and when they want to they feel like smoking, they, sm they buy and then they smoke. There could be others who buy cartons. 
they don't buy in packs, but they buy in cartons. Uh, so the buying cycle uh, is, uh, you know, rather such a extended one. They buy once in a week uh, for all the requirements because they are heavy smokers. So consumer profile and the buying cycle when they buy. Large number of people in the city of Delhi, they go to the milk booth in the morning to buy milk. So their buying cycle is daily. There are only a few people who buy for two days, three days and keep the milk in the deep freezer. The third is product characteristics uh, in terms of its value, in terms of bulk and weight, in terms of technology, in terms of market acceptance, geographic concentration and substitutability. Let's take an example of aircraft. The value of an aircraft. Have you seen a showroom for aircrafts? Obviously not, because the value of an aircraft is so high. So what these aircrafts company do? They, they do a, you know, air show. So there may be a, uh, a Paris air show, there may be a Bangalore air show, there may be a Dubai air show. So all the aircraft companies, they come there for, for that duration of week or two weeks. And the possible buyers also, they come there and and uh, and buy so uh, uh, this is how so the air show is nothing like our conventional mela which uh, i said that uh, it has become little more organized the way we have pragati medan is nothing but a place or the space which is being utilized for for various uh, you know kinds of fairs so volume bulk and weight uh, techni technicality, market acceptance, geographical concentration, and substitutability. The, sec the third category of factors are companies' characteristics, kind of companies. A lot of companies, they cannot have, they don't have the distribution. A lot of, uh, if you look at a fruit juice which you buy, or even a bottle of mineral water which you may, it, it may be written there, manufactured by so-and-so, distributed by Godrej, or distributed by Coca-Cola, distributed by Pepsi. Uh, particularly fruit juice, Tetra Pak fruit juice. You, after my session, please go and find out. You, it will be very interesting for you to observe. It will be written on a fruit juice pack, manufactured by so-and-so, marketed by so-and-so. Because these manufacturers, they don't have those marketing muscles. They don't have a distribution network like that. Godrej has. So Godrej has built a huge distribution. Philips has built up huge distribution system. So could be Pepsi and Coca-Cola and so on, many others. So the size, financial uh, capacity. The reason why a small scale sector in India is not doing too well our manufacturing index has, has, is coming down, is that the problem of financial capabilities. The small scale sector cannot keep the money blocked in finished goods. They have to convert them into cash so that they buy raw material and produce more and bring it to the market. If their goods, if their cash remains blocked in the finished goods, they have to buy working capital and at a huge, huge uh, rate of interest, which perhaps they cannot afford. Then we look at the basic expertise. The basic expertise of a company may be in distribution. Bajaj Electricals, for example, they have a great uh, expertise in distribution and uh, rather than manufacturing. And then the kind of intermediaries uh, they have. Their other factors are customer service objectives. It is being said in marketing that physical goods have become conduits to deliver added value to the customers. Physical products deliver added value to the customers. What is so great a difference between three cars when the engine is just the same? It is the same engine which is put in one model of one company 
और स्विफ्ट और ऑफ मारुति और फोर्ड मोटर्स पर्टिकुलर मॉडल और टाटा इंडिका सो रेस्ट इज जस्ट अ मेटल शेल एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द थिंग इंजन इज द हार्ट ऑफ द कार एंड एक्चुअली इट्स इज द फी एट इंजन विच दे पुट इन थ्री डिफरेंट मॉडल्स सो ओबियसली दैट स्टेटमेंट होल्ड्स ट्रू physical goods have become contours to deliver added value to the customers and customer service objectives are extremely extremely important today many products compete because they have a superior customer service and many products fail in the market because of the availability of customer service the reason one of the reasons for success of lg it is being said is there uh, availability of customer service so availability speed consistency and quality of customer service also affects the distribution system and the total cost integration in terms of transportation warehousing lot quantity inventory carrying cost so these are other factors uh, which contribute to the design of distribution system and finally there are two more factors we call competitive characteristics characteristics what competitors are doing and then environmental characteristics that something happens uh, and it becomes unaffordable for a company to 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 handle that so friends we have um, uh, gone so far and uh, in the last 5 uh, uh, to 7 minutes i would like to take you through channel relationship strategies uh, and that is my last point for you to introspect and uh, tomorrow when we uh, come back we will uh, look at these issues in the context of uh, uh, more specifically in the context of services nevertheless i have given examples uh, not to uh, praise a company or to run down a company these examples have been given purely purely to illustrate the point so please uh, take it as an illustration because uh, uh, that's a, a problem we have uh, how do we uh, elaborate uh, the point which we have for you so channel relationship strategies in fact the the key issues in this channel are uh, if you look at the the that company may have specific objectives company may have a specific requirement the dealer may have specific requirement and the consumer has on the other hand uh, very different kinds of requirements let us look at one by one when a company is picking up a developing the distribution system their objectives are market share their objectives are profit by market segment they also look at consumer brand loyalty and also the channel member involvement so they have these objectives for these objectives when they are picking up partners they are picking up partners which can give them high penetration factor if a particular company is picking up a dealer say in amritsar obviously they will say that in the entire amritsar district this dealer should be able to help us to reach out in the entire district including the villages high service level that this dealer should provide good service sell our entire range of products do local promotions because the festival season in punjab like very soon besakhi will is around the corner and in north holi and besakhi these are the two festivals which correspond with the with the 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 uh, agriculture harvesting uh, harvesting season and the farmers have the money so they do the local promotions whereas uh, in in west bengal durga puja is the festival in in down south onam and pongal might be the local festivals so uh, local promotions are very important market intelligence and market development so look at that uh, company would like to pick up dealers and these are their requirements when they pick up the dealer the dealer can give them high penetration high service 
handle a wide range of products, do local promotions, give them market intelligence and market development. Whereas the distributor, they pick up somebody, uh, Singh and Singh company from Amritsar, for, for example. Now this uh, dealer in, in, in Amritsar is, is expecting compensation. They compensation expected by resellers for providing support and uh, to the seller. So they say, whatever we do, we have to be financially compensated. We are looking at gross margin. You give us 20% margin, you give us 24% margin, only then we will deal in your products. You contribute to our overhead heads. Today, the real estate value has gone up very high in every part of the country. If you have a showroom, it costs you a lot. If you have a local go down, that space costs you a fortune. Promotional allowance, if you, have, if you want us to do the local promotion corresponding with uh, Holi or with uh, uh, Besaki, it's, it's going to cost us something. So you have to give us some allowance for that. You give us distribution exclusivity. Company would like to have high penetration, whereas the dealers want exclusivity that other than us, there should be nobody who should be your distributor in the entire Amritsar district. Then uh, continuity in supply, that you give us supplies in small quantities but regularly. But company wants lot. You buy a truckload and give us the money. The dealer say, if for the truckload I need to have a go down. So you have to balance out market development. Dealer says, do you develop the market? Why I should develop the market for you? And then credit. Now the company would like the dealer to buy the stocks and so that they get the money and dealer sell it and he recovers his money. Company is giving in any case 20% uh, margin over gross and uh, that is how the company says that you give us the money so that we go ahead with our production system. But the dealer says, we are sitting in the market, we are not running away from here. You leave the goods, if they are sold, we will give you your money. If the goods are sold, you decide whether you want to take your goods back or whatever you want to do. So it leads to a level of conflict. And finally, we look at the consumer at the, at the end. Consumer is interested in these three things, price versus value, convenience and availability. Anytime I go, it should be available at an outlet which is very conveniently located near my house, near my workplace and the cheapest price and the value, value for money. So harmonizing these three levels of interest is very difficult. If you harmonize, you have to do it, you have to resolve conflicts. We always say conflicts and negotiations to resolve conflicts, they go hand in glove. If you negotiate, resolve things amicably, you will be the winner. You will be at an advantage. But if you don't do so, the conflicts always result into low productivity, low sales you are not in the market to have low productivity and low sales. So we conclude at that note that distribution plays a very important role in the market. It helps us to reach out our goods to the ultimate consumers when they want, where they want. The dealers, the distributors, the stockists, conventionally, historically, they have been playing a very important role. The way a farmer was taking his goods to the mandi, and the Aarti there in the Mandi, the broker in the Mandi has been helping that farmer to sell his agriculture produce. In the similar way, the, the distributors, they play that role in the market. It is in that backdrop, we need to work with the support of these distributors. If there is any conflict, we resolve those conflicts so that we reach our marketing objectives. So we conclude today's discussions at that note. Yes, so you have explained <clears throat> very well.
how distribution works but my question is uh, do before distribution guess at some point of level you have explained how when and where the consumer need the things it means in some way or the another we are doing a research kind of thing mm. but do after distribution also the research kind of thing it uh, keeps on moving does it exist yes companies do sales tracking research whether uh, sales are going up or not they have to track it 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 doesn't make sense that your stocks are lying at the dealer's end and they are not moving in the marketplace uh, providing the right kind of mix at the dealer level uh, for example uh, bata is a company i'm just giving an example the entire range of their shoes may not be available at every shop i mean you try it out that a small shop in uh, yusuf sarai area will not have the high end shoes of bata which is the hush puppy uh, brand or dr shoul's brands and so on they are available maybe in south extension market maybe one of the shops there it might be available in one or two stores in connaught place area so they also do the sales tracking that where the sales are which models what brands are selling so those stocks should be made available luxury cars for example they know it that uh, very interestingly they are, that ludhiana has very high uh, sales of luxury cars coimbatore has very high uh, level of sales of luxury cars so these automobile companies also know that it's better to set up their dealers in those cities rather than thinking that oh uh, delhi will give you them maybe ludhiana is giving more than than delhi or coimbatore for that matter you have set very uh, good examples for our students and our viewers uh, to understand this uh, topic about um, the distribution how it is an important element in the service marketing thank you so very much sir for being with us in our ready set lecture and, and i would like to tell my all the viewers also that um, dr ravi uh, shankar will be coming to our uh, next session of tomorrow's also and if you want to learn more about it understand more about it you can surely watch us thank you so very much sir for being with us <music>